What's more fun to No, no, no. This is from Mila L. from Facebook. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yes. I'm, I'm, I'm God, learning the format ter- of the show. Terrible. From Mila L. Can we L. recast? Can we <laughs> recast? <laughs> Hello and welcome to Movie Phone. I'm Charlize Theron. This is David Leach. And we're here to talk about our new movie, Atomic Blonde. Does it sound better when I whisper it? It Atomic Blonde. Atomic Blonde. Uh, We'll answer a few questions that you guys sent in and then we will do a few unscripted uh, questions and I'll start. From Kevin D on Facebook, you set the bar pretty high for action in John Wick. Did you feel pressure to one-up yourself in this movie? <laughs> uh, there's always pressure to do better, right? To reinvent, to Stop make it stronger. Stop being so like... diplomatic and give us the answer we want to hear. Yes. <laughs> yes, to do things you have not done, you want to try. You want to go for it. You want to shoot for the stars and, um, you know. Plus, figure. you were worried because I was not... Keanu no, Reeves, we were, and honestly, I was just an older white lady. And not worried at all. That's really what you were concerned no, we about. Had, we had a great actress who could pull it off. <laughs> I almost started <laughs> masturbating myself. From Sean T on Facebook, who would win in a fight, Lorraine or Furiosa? Ooh, shit, that would be an amazing fight to watch, don't yeah, you think? I'd love to choreograph it. That would be incredible because they <laughs> have different. Yeah, I mean, one has got one arm missing, and so, <laughs> God, that would be brutal. We would make millions if we could I know. actually do that. Could figure it out. Um, yeah. I don't could know. Just do like a viral video of it. I don't know because I think they both have one thing in common, <clears throat> and that is that just they just don't want to lose. And I think sometimes that makes for great fighters. And I, I do think both those characters have come from circumstances where they just will not take no for. Her. They won't be the ones not walking right. out of the building. Um, so that I think they might just cripple each other <laughs> until both of them just bled out on the yeah. floor. Could be. Could be. All right, oh. so unscripted. Here we go. Uh-oh. What's your shoe size, David? I've always wanted really? to know. <laughs> it is uh, 10 and a half. 10 no, and a half. I, I think that there was a part of me that I never asked you this because um, because I just automatically, from the moment that you walked in, I just thought of you as like a director who's directed his entire life, and you have. Mm. But you started off your career in stunts, and I wanted to know, did you know from the moment that you started in this business, just even doing that, that you wanted to direct, or did that come later for you? <clears throat> um. It came later, actually. It was sort of an evolution of working in the business and, you know, sort of spending a couple decades on set and, like, just loving the process and loving telling stories. And the more um, I got into shooting fight scenes and action sequences and telling those those stories, yeah. I started to want to expand and sort of tell the whole thing. And... Um, just the opportunities that sort of laid out in front of me to mentor under great people. Yeah. And um, yeah, I don't know. It just sort of evolved. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's I love great. it. I love it. Oh, unscripted to me. Ah. My shoe size, <laughs> so. sometimes a nine and a half and sometimes a 10, depending <laughs> on how much I'm drinking. Thank you. Yes. All right. I didn't, I've always <laughs> wanted to know that. Um, I, I've never asked you this about um, Lorraine's character. But did you do anything outside of the action to prepare for her as a person? Like, sort of, and and what is your process in terms of, I mean, I got to see it in front, you know, in front of the lens, but I never. Well, you, because you were location, you were on location when I was training. And I was also, I would train in the mornings till the late afternoon. And then I would, on my way home, I would stop off and do dialect for uh, two hours. And so I was kind of living in this physical and then verbal world of just trying to find her body and her sound. I I don't know, I I was working with somebody great on the uh, kind of what I wanted to base her accent on. And I created this very strange fascination, obsession. Yeah, just complete crush on uh, 
on Charlotte Rampling. And I was listening to a lot of Charlotte Rampling just talking and um, I just fell in love with her voice. And that, not that we did that or that I try to mimic that or anything like that. But I, when I imagined what Lorraine would sound like, especially in the interrogation stuff, there was something about Charlotte that was just always so in control and yet like intimidating, yet so feminine and so deep and so like brutal, yet sexy, yet, I mean, it was just conflicting sounds in her voice. And so, uh, yeah, I was crushing on you, Charlotte, for a long time there. <laughs> still, still am, think you're amazing. From, this is from Jenna M. Riverside, California. <laughs> Hi, Jenna. Who Jenna. came up with that awesome stairwell fight? Ah, that is my stunt team. Um, and Sam Hargrave and Greg and Daniel and Monique, um, they, you know, I put the challenge out there to them to like, let's find a place and a set piece where we can do this elaborate, like one shot sequence and, yeah. um, I had been scouting a lot of locations and then I took some pictures and I sent them that and uh, that was sort of um, the challenge put forth to them and they delivered. Yeah, I mean, we have to say you work with some of the best people when it comes to yeah. that and so much of this movie is because of that team. I they're mean, great. they're really, yeah, really great. From Mila L on Facebook, what's more fun to play, badass heroines or villains? You know, I don't, I, I don't know because I feel like they're all kind of the same, you know, they're all conflicted in, in the same way and it just kind of, it comes out and I think people, I think women in general are just as conflicted as men and so whether you're, you know, a hero or whether you're a villain, I think one part of that element maybe just overtook the other one but I think there's a mixture of all of that in both of those characters or mm. you know I've never played a just a bad person that didn't kind of come up from something that was empathetic or something where you could kind of understand right. where the turn happened or you know Ravenna is a in Snow White and the Huntsman is a complete psychopath but at some point you kind of look at that story and you realize well of course she's a psychopath her mother told her that she'd only you know her, her only power was beauty and so of course she'd turn into a psychopath if you believed that was what it was right. And then, you know, the, the heroes sometimes for me, I tried to find the flaws more than I did the kind of heroicness of them because there's nothing worse than watching a hero trying to be a hero. And I think real heroes are people who are flawed and conflicted and f***ed up and sometimes make terrible mistakes and it's what they do afterwards and it's kind of where they're their sincerity and their heart is in, in, in some of those moments that I think then makes them a hero. But I think some of the greatest heroes in cinema are, are probably most of the, some of the most f***ed up people that you'll ever come into contact with. And right. I think that's the beauty of humanity. We, bad isn't just bad and good isn't just good. Right. It's we're, we're a little bit of everything. All right, I get to do an unscripted to you. <clears throat> So, was there anything in this film, stunt-wise, that you really, 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 really wish you could have done, but unfortunately didn't get to do? No, surprisingly, no. And I think with the resources that we had um, available to us, you'd think like there was some big spectacle stuff missing or whatever, but everything was so based on her character that I think that the action arcs incredibly well. And services, Lorraine's arc in a, you know, in perfectly. And so if you'd asked me after If I gave our, you $10, 000, $10 million more, uh, you just pocket it. I would, yeah, <laughs> I would, I would, I would. So the thing Let's with the two marketing. ponies <laughs> no, and the clown, did, so, yeah, you didn't really want to do I that? I didn't really want to do okay, that. Got it. I was just trying to get <laughs> money from the studio. <laughs> okay, it's your turn, right. unscripted. Oh, well, I'm gonna ask you something similar. So did you, are there any sort of scenes that you wish you could have done over and maybe that's a loaded question I guess no I, th I wish I can do anything all of it over mm -hmm. I wish I can go back 22 years ago and redo my first movie <laughs> what? look yeah. at where you are why would you want to do that No, but I think that's part of the creative process and I don't think anybody any artist really ever feels fully I think the the job of somebody who creates is to always kind of see where it could have been more or and I think when you get to that place you're like oh my god that's exactly how that's perfect that's 
probably when you should stop being creative, you know, because I think creativity, if it stops like that, then it's not creativity anymore. Yeah. So yeah, I, I mean, but I'm not, not one regret, of those people, not like no, not because, regrets at all. And I yeah. don't have like a, I'm not, I've never been, other than the, the first, very, very first movie that I saw myself in, like my own voice like made me cringe. Like when I heard, it's like you're, when you hear your voice on a voice machine for the right. first time and you're just like, is that how I can sound? Right. Like that was cringeworthy for me. And then you kind of get over it. And I think as a producer, I had to be able to remove. So it's not that I'm hung up on, oh my God, I'm so terrible. It's more just, mm, God, if I, yeah. I would add this. And that doesn't necessarily make it better. It might make it worse, but that process is <clears throat> always running in my head. Well, thank you, Charlize. Oh, you're so welcome. Ah, and thanks to Movie Phone for having us. Thanks to all for watching and sending us your questions. Go see the movie Atomic Blonde. Yay. July 28th. Guys, you're so nice and PC. I don't think you swore <laughs> once. I'm Go see our movie, I'm ass. Yes. <laughs> Watch her kick some fing ass. Oh my God, he knows how to swear. That's amazing. I do. I do. <laughs>